it takes around 30 litres of water to produce a kilo of mushrooms. That compares with around 75 litres to produce a kilo of potatoes, 500 litres for a kilo of wheat and 12,000 litres of water for a kilo of milk powder. Mushroom production also incorporates other efficiencies. At Meadow Mushrooms on the outskirts of Christchurch, a small area of land is required to produce around 20 tonnes of mushrooms a day. The production process also incorporates locally available waste streams. Wayne Collingwood explains. We've got five sites that we operate from. So we have a spawn lab, a cannery, and then we have our three major sites where we have our composting, uh, processing and our growing site, which is this main site we're standing on right now. When the original owners decided where to put the farm, they decided on Canterbury because that's where you get a lot of the good raw materials. That is your wheat straw and also your chicken manure. There's a ready source of that very close by. We need a lot of space. However, we're also able to grow multiple heights within a growing room. So there are many shelves or many trays that are balanced on top of each other. Everything is enclosed, everything is indoors, so it's capital intensive in terms of what we have on site. We have 38,000 square metres of growing space. We have just developed our first sustainability report and we've got some targets very much set around that. So that's around reducing our electricity, further reducing our water, even though we use very little in comparison to most other industries to produce our mushrooms. On our compost yard, we have made sure that we retain all water that lands onto our concreted area, which is a very large area, and we recycle that. At the conclusion of our growing process, we have spent mushroom compost, which is no longer usable for us. Uh, however, it is still has a great organic material and uh, trace elements uh, that are still really useful for our Canterbury soils. So we then put that back into the farming community and in fact will be on the land for some of those farms that are going to grow our wheat for the next season. We're in one of the growing rooms. We've got two different types of growing rooms that we have here. We've got the old tray farm and here we're in one of the new Dutch shelf system farms. We've got harvesters that are harvesting all of our mushrooms to the appropriate size that we've asked them to. Also getting the appropriate mix of product lines that we're after. We have about 520 staff that work for us. Over half of those will work in the harvesting department. So mushrooms grow at a phenomenal rate. Uh, they double in size every 24 hours. And so we need harvesters here both day and night to be able to continue to harvest those mushrooms. We've got over 40 nationalities that work for us here at Meadow Mushrooms. It's great having that diverse culture and nature with Meadow Mushrooms. Those mushrooms that are perhaps not quite the right shape or not quite the right size, they'll go into other markets that are quite happy to go with a misshapen mushroom. The compost is where it all happens. So in here, uh, you, you may be able to see is this fantastic compost that's gone through a five-week process. And this is where all the energy, the nutrients, the moisture, and everything that drives great quality mushrooms, this is where it comes from. You'll see in here that there's like spiderweb type white uh, stuff all the way through it. And that's our mycelium. A bit like a root structure for you'd have for a plant. This is a, a similar system where you've got a web-like structure that feeds and brings all the water and the food from the compost to the mushroom. These rooms were filled about two weeks ago and the mushrooms are just ready to be harvested. So we'll be in here tomorrow and we'll begin harvesting the very beginning. So we have three flushes and this is the beginning of our first one. At the base here, in this particular section here, we've got compost. We also put a layer of casing, five centimetres at the top. And that casing layer is all important for us to be able to convert the mycelium into beautiful mushrooms. The casing is a layer of peat and sugar beet lime. And this casing comes from Germany. After they come out of the growing rooms, they all get transported into the packing area. It's really important that we weigh every box and make sure it's the correct weight for our customers. From there, it goes through into the vacuum chillers. Now, the vacuum chilling portion of it is really important, so we want to be able to get the mushroom from the growing room into the vacuum chiller as quickly as possible and down to two degrees because that's how we make sure we get a long-lasting mushroom through to our customers. 
When the customers are grabbing the uh, pre-packs or their bags uh, of mushrooms from the supermarket, once they get home, it's you get them back in the fridge and make sure that they stay nice and chilled. And that will make sure that they last eight to 10 days. We have one strain, the Garicus bisperus, and we have a white variety and we have a brown variety. So the white variety always gets grown into those white button mushrooms that you see in your supermarket. The brown variety is portobello, which is when the veils are showing and you put those on the barbecue or whatever else you use them for. But we also have the smaller brown, Swiss brown button. We're a significant future. We want to continue to expand and to grow the mushroom market within New Zealand and we think there's significant opportunity to further develop that. We're also looking at further developing what we can do on this particular site in terms of new growing rooms as well. Offshore is very tricky with mushrooms because mushrooms have a short shelf life. When you transport those overseas, you lose control very quickly of being able to maintain that cool chain process. So no, there's no real focus on getting overseas. An interesting, uh, relatively unknown fact about mushrooms, as much as they can be very tasty, is they're also incredibly healthy for you. So they have a huge range of B vitamins uh, stacked in there. There's selenium, which we are uh, short of in our uh, New Zealand soils. Uh, and they're just really good for you. This program was made with funding from New Zealand On Air.